reloj profético de Dios God's prophetic time clock is ticking away its final minutes and the glory of God is flowing out across the whole earth the prophecies of the Holy Scripture are beginning to emerge from between the pages of the Bible read and reread by men and women of God a wave of wisdom and knowledge is pouring out over the church God has opened his holy temple so that his sons can touch his heart y toquen su corazón. The heart of God is broken. He weeps for four billion people who are still bound by Satan. The memory of the cross disrupts the heaven for each strike inflicted day after day on the body of the Lord because of the abominations of the earth. They eat the food of their gods, rats, in imitation of Holy Communion, in order to have communion with them. They burn human bodies. They bath with corpuses half charred in order to receive a blessing from their dead. While the yoke of the devil weighs more and more heavily upon millions of human souls who are submerged in darkness, The heavens tremble at the voice of Jesus who intercedes, crying, I have already paid, I have already paid. That's exactly what we sensed when God spoke to us while we were in the Tower of Intercession that we established in Mexico and in Costa Rica with Ronnie Chavez. The revelation began to come over us, clear as a mountain stream. God was in the process of revealing to us the location of the throne of Satan on earth, the precise place of the government of the Babylonian structure that controlled the false religions of the world. It was a place of darkness and death an ice castle, isolated and occult, where the prince of this world has established his dwelling place, a place where the imitator could sit like God over all the earth. This place is the highest mountain on the world. It is Mount Everest. When we look at the lives of the prophets, or the great men who have abandoned all to bring the gospel into the most inhospitable corners of the earth and along the most obscure paths, we ask ourselves how far we ourselves will be prepared to go in obedience to God. When one of those divine orders places in the balance all that you have, all that you are, and even your very life, even worse, when you have to press against your heart each of your loved ones, and when you have to place them on the altar for a farewell with perhaps no return. Or when you know that the price to be paid is a battle with no truce against death itself when the devil rises up and decided to destroy all that belongs to you, attacking you with exhausting insomnia and terrible oppression. A moment arrives when God poses a question to each of us. How far are you willing to go for me? And this day arrived when he asked us to go to the summit of the world, Mount Everest. That was the greatest challenge of our lives. Such a challenge that it would have been impossible for us to rise to it had it not been God who sent us. It was an enormous challenge knowing that on this earth it is not the glory of this world that awaits us at the accomplishment of such a command, but rather the mockery and the criticism of those who don't even attempt to understand that God is sovereign and that he can accomplish things that can shock our intelligence and break all the structures of human logic. Mount Everest 
rises to a height of almost 29,000 feet. This is 10,000 feet higher than the peak of Orizaba, which is the highest mountain in Mexico, or 6,000 feet more than the highest peak in the Andes. Its summit is only 500 feet lower than the aeronautic routes of a jet plane. At this altitude, there is no oxygen. We had to climb with oxygen tanks, specially made for high altitude. The risks were very high because not one of us was a mountain climber. That meant we had to go through intensive training. This involved climbing 13 mountain peaks, among which were the highest peaks of Mexico and Peru, namely the peaks of Orizaba and the Huascara. The Lord trained us on very high rocky walls in the midst of raging tempests, electrical storms and earth slides. In addition to this, God allows to go through an extraordinary experience on the heights of Peru, in a spiritual battle that unleash 11 avalanches around us. Another problem that our team faced was the intense cold. The temperature at the summit reached between minus 40 to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. In certain cases, that results in frostbite and the hands and the feet must be then amputated. The cold sometimes even causes death. Mount Everest takes the life of about 35% of the mountain climbers who scale it. Other causes of fatal accident are avalanches as well as brain and pulmonary edemas, resulting from an accumulation of fluid in the organs due to the lack of resistance to the human body to the high altitude. The most difficult part of Mount Everest to climb is the part called the icefall. It is at the end of an ice stream that is in a perpetual, though almost imperceptible motion. As the hours go by, huge crevices open and close, causing enormous masses of accumulated ice the size of gigantic buildings to fall continuously. We left for Nepal with less than 50% of the funding we would need in the belief that God will provide in all things. We renounce every comfort in order to consecrate ourselves totally to our mission, that of really tending to the cross in love for the millions of lost souls for whom our own soul cried out to God. From Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal, we arrived to Lukla, a small Sherpa village situated at an altitude of 7,000 feet. From there, our expedition undertook a difficult hike through the mountains and valleys that lasted seven days, which involved eight to ten hours of walking a day, but the power of God sustained us in spite of extreme exhaustion. A team of intercessors led by Silvia Valenzuela of Mexico formed our rear guard from a very modest cabin that not even had the bare necessities such as water, gas or toilets. Along the way, we climb up to the high summits to seize the altars consecrated to important divinities. We set out flags bearing Bible verses, like the little flags that the Buddhists used to pray to their gods. As the prophet Habakkuk says, you pierce the head of your enemies with their own arrows. Or like Jeremiah referring to Babylon, your banners have been burned. This is why we burn their flags prophesying the end of Buddhism. El fin del budismo. One of the toughest battles was at the Tiamboche Monastery where the lamas protected the great Amada Blan, guardian of the Everest, that protects the high places of the earth. 
I prophesy that the diabolical veil that is over these mountains is pierced through. I declare the fall of the enemy over these mountains and this land. Officially, we come to declare the routing of the enemy. Let him be chained and bound. Let the power of God come now over the enemy, over kings, over principalities, and over rulers. Let judgment now be decreed. All covenants are abolished. All magical formulas are dried up. All mantras are destroyed. All incantations over this nation, I declare them annulled. I declare all yokes rotted. Let confusion reign over the enemy. Let fear come upon him. And let from this spot, which has been transformed into a war tower, we now sound the command, let the powers of Buddhism be bound. La coraza de justicia, el escudo de la fe y la espada del espíritu. Tenemos además armas espirituales poderosas con las cuales luchamos contra el diablo. Una batalla que no podemos perder. Levántate soldado, pon alto la bandera. Empieza bien el arco y la flecha. Agarra bien tu escudo, tu lanza y espada, se escucha la trompeta, la orden es a luchar. Hay guerra, guerra espiritual, hay guerra y vamos a ganar. La orden es a luchar, a luchar, a luchar. A tu enemigo, no es carne ni sangre, hoy lo puedes vencer con estrategias. Las armas de esta guerra. Provienen de lo alto Del comandante en jefe Jehová el vencedor ¡A luchar! We had to sleep in extreme conditions, on very basic wooden planks, in very humid spots among the rats surrounded by dried excrement. The way that Jesus walked became alive to us in our mission. And the more we humble ourselves, the more the Lord was present to lead some of the Sherpas to salvation. But, but, the religious, his name is Jesus. Jesus. He puts him on a cross. A cross. A cross. A cross. Come here. Come here. He gets him. Jesus. Pull me. Pa. Pa. Me. Jesus, yes. I have Shh. done wrong, Shh. Shh. and I want Shh. to come to you. Shh. I want to reconcile Shh. with God. Shh. Would you accept my repentance? God? Yes, come with me. Come, come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Who? Who wants to go with Jesus? The power of your spirit comes to them. Yes. That they bear witness, Father, that something is happening in their spirit this very night because you are coming to them. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Take them, Father. Oh, yes, take, take them, them, Father, and come them and indwell them, Father. Yes, them. Father, for the fruit, oh, yes. the first fruit of this land, Amen. Father, we Amen. consecrate it to you in the name Amen. of Jesus. We are arriving at the base camp. After walking for seven days, we're now about 15 hours away from Lucy. We have seen God manifest himself in a supernatural way, encouraging us and strengthening us. We were also confronted with some fairly tough passages, which we referred to among ourselves as the valley of the shadow of death. It is the love of Christ that motivates us. Love for those millions of souls who live within the 1040 window. We know that what is happening is so marvelous that in the coming weeks, God is going to make a strong impact. The veil of darkness that covers this nation as well as the world will be torn apart. The influences of Babylon powers will fall. A new wave of evangelism will flow forth, as well as an extraordinary global harvest. We rejoice that you are also participating in this mandate by supporting us with your prayers, your offerings, and your encouragement. And we know that in the days to come, you also will be encouraged to organize prayer towers and prayer walks to liberate your cities. Remember what motivates us. It's not in our strength, but in the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Arriving to base camp was very painful and difficult. The power of the enemy manifested itself through a strong spirit of death. Pastor Ronnie Chavez and I had our strength as if it were drained as by a vampire. We reached the camp only after great difficulties and through much prayer. We had to leave one of the warriors behind to become acclimatized following an attack of altitude sickness. By nightfall, death had begun to settle over the team. It is our first day at the base camp. We are in a very difficult moment of this expedition because Greg is in a serious condition. We had to place him in a decompression unit, as you can see. We have a doctor with us from the Spanish expedition who fortunately was equipped with such a unit. Here we are in the prayer room, for the time being converted into a hospital, and we can see the spiritual warfare team interceding. We are very concerned. The problem is a brain edema, but we know that God is in control of the whole situation. How's it going? He's the rich, trying to have communication with Greg. We see Greg's face in this most difficult moment. In these moments, so difficult. Greg shows the symptoms of a cerebral edema. He could have had a pulmonary edema, but it's a cerebral edema. What we are doing with the decompression unit is simulating the atmospheric pressure at a lower altitude. Day is dawning after having battled all night against death in the middle of a snowstorm. But God gave us the victory. We have surrounded the camp with Bible verses, thus marking our territory. We have also set up what we call our meeting tabernacle. I would like you to notice that all this land resembles an enormous crown, as if it were the center of the highest point on earth, and our base camp occupies one of the most important points in this crown. Thank you, brother. Your miracle last night. Padre, gracias por el milagro que usted me vida anoche. No nos importa la teología de cada uno. We care about your rhema word, Lord. Nosotros creemos en tu palabra rema. So, Lord God, we know you are ushering in the time that is short. 
Así que yo sé, Señor, que tú nos estás introduciendo en los tiempos que son cortos. Porque estos son los últimos de los últimos días. Y que estás usando estos mismos momentos para meternos en estos últimos, últimos días. How glorious of our God to use such simple items. Qué glorioso es, Señor, de usar estas pequeñas cosas tan simples. This is Rema. Eso es Rema. This is the rhema of God. Este es el rema de Dios. A Bible out of a hotel. Una Biblia que sale de un hotel. Little daggers. Pequeñas dagas. Small flags. A unas pequeñas banderas. A dollar. Un dólar. <laughs> Lord, this map. Señor, este mapa. All these things that man would look at and laugh. Todas estas cosas que los hombres las mirarían y se reirían. You say use with the power of God. Y tú dijiste usa esas cosas en el poder de Dios. So God, we want to declare that these are not simple items. Así que declaramos en tu nombre, Señor, que estos no son simples cositas. These are the anointed weapons of God. Estos son las armas ungidas de Dios. Este pecado. And the bondage. Y estas ataduras. De tus hijos que están alrededor de todo el mundo. And Lord, I am not crying my own tears, Father, but I cry your tears. Llorando con mis propias lágrimas, Señor. Estoy llorando con tus lágrimas, Señor. Padre, yo unjo estas... Unjo estas... Estas banderas con tus lágrimas. Oh, yes. Lord, we intercede. Padre, intercedemos en todas estas naciones. Oh, Señor, que tus señores, que tus ojos, sean, que sus ojos sean abiertos, que sus oídos oigan, padre, que las cadenas sean rotas. He visto tantas caras, Señor, tantas caras tan bonitas que tú has hecho. Y que tú deseas ver frente a frente. Padre, úgenos como tus siervos primero. Y como siervos de esta gente. Y esto lo veo de Dios Esto es lo que he dicho. Is the advancing kingdom. Yes. Esto es el reino que viene. These are forceful men and women. Estos son los hombres y las mujeres poderosas. Who are willing to go up in the mountaintops. Que subirán a lo alto de las montañas. Who are willing to train for months. Yes. Que están deseosos de entrenarse por que meses. Han, que han tenido el deseo de Que se han entrenado por meses. At the scorn of other people and the laughter of people. Con la burla de los demás, con la, la ofensa de los demás. They're willing to forcefully advance the kingdom of God. Pero son esos los violentos que están arrebatando para el reino de Dios. Uh, a figure, a brilliant figure, más grande que el mundo. Bigger than the mountain. Que se sienta sobre el monte. That is sitting over the mountain. Y, y no tiene no tiene forma su rostro, es solo como, como el resplandor de una figura. And his face has no uh, form. Form. It's like the, you can only see the light. Y ese coming personaje out of this se sienta en, en el monte. And this figure is sitting on the top of the mountain. Y ese personaje grita. And this person, this person ha caído. Is shouting. Ha caído. Is down. Babilonia la gran. Ha caído. Is ha fallen. Caído. Babylon the Great. Ha caído. Is fallen. Ha is caído. Fallen. Desde hoy dice el Espíritu. Since today, you can tell. Pregonando en las azoteas. Tell it from the high, from the rooftops. From the rooftops. En los montes y en los valles. In the mountains, in the valleys. En los pueblos y las ciudades. In the little villages, in the cities. Pregonando. You can speak. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. Ha caído. It's fallen. Ha caído Babilonia la Grande. Babylon the Great has. Estamos ya aquí a punto de salir. We are about to go out to cut the throat of the great beast. We are living here in very important days in history. The entire warfare team is here and is preparing for the great battle, directed this morning by the General Ronnie Chavez. Liderada por el General esta mañana, el Dr. Ronnie Chavez. Padre, te invocamos. Father, we call upon you, angels of heaven, witnesses of our living God, 
present in this place, raise your songs to the living God, because it is the hour designated by the Holy Spirit for the fall of the beast, of the dragon with seven heads who sits on the mountains and influences the nations of the earth. It is the hour for the fall of the Babylon the Great, the great prostitute, mother of all the abominations of the earth, and the fall of the dragon. In the name of Jesus, we declare that this act is firm, that it is valid, and that nothing can annul it, because it has proceeded from the mouth of the Almighty, and it is a word that comes from the throne of God. The decree is sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit. Revelation 17 one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. With her the kings on the, of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The title was written on her forehead Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. We are going to pray and anoint the flags with this olive oil. Then we'll cut the ties and release the flags that represent the tens or so countries that are not here. They will enter into freedom and into an unprecedented revival. Father, we pour this oil on this flag in the name of Jesus, as a symbol of the anointing of the Spirit. I loose all the bounds over this nation and over the nations of the earth, and I prophesy revival over them. Let them mount up as eagles, free in the flow of the Spirit. I prophesy that there will be among those nations that will be touched in the coming months, in the coming years, Nepal, Israel, Mexico, Thailand, England. Nepal, Israel, México, Tailandia, Inglaterra, las islas cuello. El enemigo vencer es un dragón de siete cabezas y debe ser herido en la garganta. The angel who has appeared in my dreams told me that the dragon has seven heads and that it must be wounded at the neck. Each head is seated on a different mountain. After th having thrust the dagger into the ground, I took the sword with a firm hand and struck seven blows in the air, as the Lord has shown me. He had said to me, cut his throat as you would cut the trunk of a tree. I could feel where the sword penetrated, and I cut with force, but I didn't look. At the seventh blow, I felt as if I had cut the throat of a gigantic giraffe. This is a representation of the church and its humanity, as Jesus Christ was on the earth and by which we have the victory. We have made it this far by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the victory of the cross of Calvary. As I have said before, I thrust the dagger deep into the ground, deep, so that the wound in your throat and in your neck will be firm and powerful. As the Lord said in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as a prophet sent by God to the nations, I release now the word and I proclaim, it is done. The beast and the dragon are wounded in the name of Jesus, Son of the living God. Es hecho, herida es la bestia, herido es el dragón, por el nombre de Jesucristo, el Hijo del Dios viviente. Tan Satan, here is the sword that God has placed within my hands, and I will strike you so hard by the Spirit that you will know, that you will know, that you will know that your kingdom is falling. I will do it by Jehovah and by Jesus. Now I prophesy that the beast receives his blow. Now by Jehovah, by Jesus, by Jehovah, by Jesus, by Jehovah, by Jesus, Satan, be destroyed. Amen. Fall now. Your kingdom has fallen. 
I prophesy that your kingdom has fallen. Because Satan and his beasts have fallen. Noise, tumult in the heavens because the archangel Michael has come forth with the sword of God in order to bring retribution for iniquity. Noise in the heavens, noise over the armies of the earth because the eternal God has risen up in judgment, thus saith the Lord. Father, in this hour I humble myself before you, representing a prostitute. Lord, I represent all human beings who, like a prostitute, have fornicated against the sovereign God. Father, we have drunk of the wine of the wrath of the fornication of the great harlot. That is why I am dressed this way. My pants are black, symbolizing the sinful nature, and my steps that are strayed in the direction of fornication against you, sovereign God, and my red garment surrounding my heart and my head represent the blood of the Lamb who washed me. Now, Lord, I ask your forgiveness for all the spiritual fornication of the earth. Each decisive blow that God dealt to the enemy, darkness arose with strong tempests in the heavens. As the afternoon shadows fell, faces as if petrified seemed to emerge, representing satanic armies. But the presence of God kept us in perfect peace. Our prayers created a kind of impenetrable canopy, permitting us to accomplish all the prophetic acts that the Lord had commanded us to perform without our feeling in any way disturbed. In the morning, the temperature fell to minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit, and the tents froze, both inside and out. When coming out of the tents, we had to pay close attention to where we walk, because during the frigid night, crevices had opened around the tents. We have arrived at the heart of Sagarmara, which is considered the goddess mother of the whole universe. It is there that a large part of the force of the Queen of Heaven is seated. We are at the heart of the ice castle where the devil has established the mountain of Babylon, as well as the entire spiritual system governed by the Queen of Heaven and sent out across all the nations of the earth. What we are about to do is a symbolic act, a prophetic act, and perhaps something new for many of you. It is important that you understand that the symbolism does not have its roots in witchcraft as many think, 
but it has a divine origin. The first symbolic act we find is in the Garden of Eden, when God covered Adam and Eve with the skin of an animal, which was the fruit of a sacrifice that symbolized God's covering upon them. It is also important to understand that which is done symbolically on earth under the direction of the Holy Spirit of God also has implication in the heavenlies. We see here a dolmen. It consists of two rocks set up parallel to one another. It is what was used in primitive times to attract occult powers to the earth. The first worship ever addressed to the goddesses, mother, to the cold universe was offered up in a place like this. The powers of the goddess mother came forth from such a monument and spread out across the entire earth. It is very interesting that on this dolmen, nature has called the image of the queen of heaven, the mother goddess. A virginal image that we are going to destroy accordingly to the prophecy of Jeremiah 50 and 51. Tierra declara el Señor, extenderé mi mano contra ti, te haré rodar desde las peñas y te reduciré a monte quemado y no tomaré de ti piedra angular ni piedra para ti. I am against you, O destroying mountain, you who destroy the whole earth, declares the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against you, roll you off the cliffs and make you a burnt out mountain. No rock will be taken from you for a cornerstone nor any stone for a foundation, for you will be desolate forever, declares the Lord. The Lord led us to perform certain specific prophetic acts, such as marking out the territory with flags, erecting altars on the top of the world, and spreading the name of God everywhere, decreeing that we consecrate the earth to Him. In the course of the time we were there, the whole valley was filled with praise and worship, and on several occasions we were able to see angels around us. During this time at the base camp, the spiritual battles continued to provoke violent storms. At the Everest Hotel at Siamboche, situated at 12,000 feet above sea level, intercessory prayer teams directed by Doris Wagner and Silvia Valenzuela continued the spiritual warfare, all the while enveloped in an intense fog and opposition. In spite of the intense calls, some of the prayer team read the Bible aloud prophetically decreeing that the word was going to cover the whole earth from the top of the world, while others prophesied and proclaimed the presence of God. Shaddai, the Almighty, the All-Sufficient One, dwells in this valley.
It is a very special morning. There are angels all over the sky and a holy atmosphere all around us, as if swords were forming at this moment in the mountains, a splendor coming out of the north is beginning to emerge from behind Mount Everest that might be described as a strange and marvelous fire coming to crown the mountain. We sense an atmosphere totally different from any other morning, as if something special were getting ready to happen. The picture that we see here is the shadow of Mount Everest. It is a very strange phenomenon. Everest is clearly marked by an eclipse. We can sense a special presence, as if the illuminated clouds were full of angels, even while dark shadows still try to defend the high places of the earth everywhere we look. We have never seen anything like it. The light that we see comes from the north side, yet it is not the sun. God is showing us the spiritual mountain, we sense a glorious presence this morning. There is a real war in the heavenlies. We have goosebumps from the presence of God in this place. It is as if God were seated in the high places of the earth in order to govern, in order to reign and to conquer. A royal eagle has formed in the sky. It is like if God is making a sculpture of the battle that he has begun to wage in the heavens. The glory of God is spread abroad in every direction. The commander-in-chief has summoned us to the great battle against the Queen of Heaven and against the foundations of Babylon. The route to climb is the one marked out by the Holy Spirit and with no other ability than His anointing upon us. We left by opening a new path in the most dangerous part of Mount Everest, the Ice Fall. a crevice and we had to walk down a bit in order to cross it. We are in a very dangerous spot and we have even uh, come across human bones.
I have just found some human bones. We have a part of a skull, a femur and some clothes. We are in the midst of the icefall. It is an area of crevasses where many climbers have lost their lives. We have to cross this area before arriving to what will culminate in the battle against the Great Heart. There are some more human bones. There is a set of teeth, corpses and human remains. Where is the set of teeth? Down there, there are teeth, and there's an arm. The difficulty in approaching the spot where the Babylonian figure is to be found is that there is a series of crevices and some very high ice walls that we have to climb by very technical methods. We now have our objective in view there are some ice peaks or penitent pinnacles, according to the technical and geographical terminology. The way is very difficult because there are crevices, uh, precipices and blocks of ice that we have to cross. We are analyzing a crevice in order to see where the best way to cross is. We have just witnessed a terrible avalanche. It is as if a whole side of the mountain has tumbled down. We're just opposite to the avalanche. The person standing there covering his face is Michael. La cámara está llena de hielo. Esta es quizás una de las peores avalanchas en el Everest. We have reached the throne of the Queen of Heaven and the Babylonian powers. While we are drawing up the decree of her destruction, we could feel an energy that is even affecting the camera. As a representative of England and the United Kingdom, I repent for having given place to all these demonic powers. I renounce this right over the Sagamantha and I give it to you, Lord. In the powerful name of Jesus, we take this symbolic rock as a representation of the Queen of Heaven, as a figure of the demon invoked as the Queen of Heaven, like the Babylon the Great, as a symbol of the Babylonian structure over the governments of the world. Father, in this very moment, we ask you to come against her and that your prophetic decrees be accomplished in the name of Jesus. Babylon, the great harlot, has been captured. The great prostitute has fallen. 
We take this stone as a symbol of every sculpted image on the face of the earth, a symbol of the Queen of Heaven and the Babylonian structure. In the name of Jesus, we declare we, the children of the living God, that just as this stone is split apart, even so the great prostitute is fallen, says the Lord Almighty. Father, we now take this book in which all the names of the Queen of Heaven are written. And in the same way that this book is destroyed, the Queen of Heaven and all her deceptive representations are also destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask your forgiveness for the sins of all the people in the whole world, and particularly for those in the 1040 window. We ask that today all the eyes of the blind be opened and that they may see your glory, Lord, and that they may praise you and bless you. In the name of Jesus, according to the word in Isaiah 25, we decree that the veil of darkness that covers this whole area is hereby annihilated. We tear this veil of darkness and we decree that the nations shall come to the light in the name of Jesus. We have raised a flag on a high mountain. We have come from distant lands as instruments of your wrath to bring down the power of the Queen of Heaven. Father, we prophetically decree this mountain to represent Mount Zion. We place this rod as a symbol of Aaron's rod that budded in the name of Jesus. We place this talent as a symbol of the divine authority of the Lord of hosts to consecrate this mountain. We place this menorah, symbol of the Holy Spirit, so that the light of the Holy Spirit, the light of Christ, will shine and so the rivers of oil will flow from this mountain unto all the nations and bring with it all the truth of the gospel. We place this Torah as a symbol of your word engraven on the high places of the mountain. We place it here, Lord, so that your word will go forth and enlighten all the nations. We place this New Testament to proclaim the second coming of Christ for all the nations as a symbol of the salvation of over four million people who were captives by Babylon and who now today have been freed in the name of Jesus. We establish here in the name of God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Ruach Kodesh, to him, the one and only God who lives and reigns, we give all the glory and all the praise and all the power. We establish God at the top of the world and over the nations of the earth. Amen. The high places of the earth have been consecrated to Jesus Christ. The Lord commanded us to end our climb. He told us to go back down and to abandon the base camp before 11 a.m. the next morning because the mountain will be cast down at the commandment of God. We had a great sense of victory while at the same time the sense of destruction like that of Sodom and Gomorrah. Anita, it's Sylvia. We are listening. We are all here. Ronnie, too. Can you hear me? Cambio aquí, pollo desplumado, escuchándoles. Cambio. I can hear you. Perfecto. 
Anita, we are receiving you perfectly. We are here and we are weeping because of the manifestations of God. They are marvelous. Glory to God. Since this morning we have been filled with the Holy Spirit. We saw the form of an eagle over Everest. There was such a strong presence of God. We pray against the Babylon the Great. There was an extraordinary anointing. The way was so difficult that we have if we had a terrible avalanche. It seemed as if half of the mountain was collapsing. We were covered in darkness and when we were prophesying the heavens open. It was so marvelous. You cannot imagine what we are experiencing here. The glory of God is so strong. She is falling. The great Babylon has fallen. Anita, that's marvelous what you are telling us. Lord, bless Anna, bless Vero, Michael, and Lincho. Protect them from all evil, from every attack of the enemy. We break every power and we ask for an ever greater anointing for the return, new strength and renewed power. Let a marvelous spirit of worship descend this evening, both here and up there. Let it fill our camps and bring peace in every point of the intercession and of spiritual warfare. Let even more of your power, of your glory, and of your manifestation fall now upon these warriors, just like it is beginning to do in this cabin, that you are filling us with your presence. Lord, bless us all, because great is our victory. The great prostitute has fallen. The beast has fallen. We proclaim in the name of Jesus Christ, by means of short waves on this radio, that Jesus Christ is Lord and that He reigns as Lord, and we give Him the glory forever. Amen. She has fallen, she has fallen, she has fallen, and her enemies are scattered. Look at that avalanche. It's enormous. We are seeing the manifestation of God. We are witnessing the destruction of everything. <laughs> it 
It's total destruction. The Lord commanded us to leave the area this morning. He said to us, my people, get out of this place, my people. We are only about 15 minutes away from that avalanche. The entire base camp was buried, but the Lord spared the lives of other climbers engaged in other expeditions. We felt the fire of God when we emerged from the shadow of death. Two silhouettes appear in the midst of the fire, ushering the glory of God. For the first time in history, we have arrived at the end of a spiritual battle at the global level. Approximately 50 million intercessors join their lives together in prayer to liberate 4 billion individuals prisoners of Satan. God listened from heaven and millions of people are giving themselves to Christ. We are winning the war. Let's go on and take the spoils. Il était 1997 quand on a monté la montagne la plus haute du monde, le Mont Everest. It was 1997 when we climbed the highest mountain of the world, Mount Everest, one of the most important exploits the Holy Spirit sent the church to do. We questioned ourselves why we needed to climb a mountain like that. The answer was to deliver thousands of people. God has ways to work that the human thought cannot understand. But the truth is that in the highest mountain we found the powers of darkness, which are one of the most important of the world. In Mount Everest was the location of one of the most important positions which the Queen of Heaven rules over the nations and the continents. This was one of the greatest expeditions of the Christian Church. And it's not only our expedition, because there were thousands and even millions of intercessors that prayed for us. So it is the exploit of the Church, and the results were marvelous. Many of these countries that were captive by the devil are now able to preach the gospel and are today filled with churches. Sagarmata is the name in Nepali for Mount Everest, that means the mother goddess of the universe, which is located in Nepal. There were some small churches located in that region in 1997. Today, thousands of churches are there because of the spiritual warfare. This war removed the darkness and allowed the light of the gospel in and the people to come to Jesus Christ. And this is the reason we believe it is important that you watch this film, because it is an historical fact that belong to each one of us. Tenemos además armas espirituales poderosas con las cuales luchamos contra el diablo una batalla que no podemos perder. Levántate soldado, pon alto la bandera, pesa bien el arco y la flecha. Agarra bien tu escudo. Tu lanza y espada Se escucha la trompeta La orden es A luchar Hay guerra Guerra espiritual Hay guerra Y vamos a ganar Hermano Te tienes que La orden es a luchar, a luchar, a luchar. Esta guerra proviene de lo alto, 
Jehová el vencedor ¡A luchar! Hay guerra Guerra espiritual Hay guerra Hay guerra Y vamos a La orden es a luchar, a luchar. 